like whistling this morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is October the 21st, 2015. We've stopped counting the shows. We know we've done well over 235 of them. <laughs> so uh, those words that you are hearing now, Bobby McFerrin wrote that. We're old school music lovers. We want you to know, be happy, don't worry. And while we tone the music down in the background, we want to just welcome you to another episode. We've gone monthly now because our Surge 365 business has kind of kept us sort of busy, and plus we'll be going on a cruise in a few more weeks. But we just want you to know that we didn't go anywhere. We're still here on a monthly basis. Uh, Last week we interviewed magazine publisher of Hope Magazine, uh, has national distribution. Her name is Angelia White, and she is also listed in our archives on the Facebook page of Read New Attitude, uh, celebrating her 10th anniversary. It is a struggle being a magazine publisher, but she has done such great things for women and for families in general because of that magazine. But today we have an excellent, excellent topic about wealth. Now, uh, wealth, oh, my God, wealth. Who has wealth? Well, you'd be surprised that anybody with the right training and the right understanding and the right support systems can use what they have to get what they want. Sounds like a James Brown song coming up, doesn't it, Kenny? (laughs) Yes, it does. Well, what we're going to do is uh, introduce uh, our guest in a few moments, but uh, we're just so glad to have you on Read New Attitude Action Now, where we apply concrete thoughts and tips and tactics to ignite and inspire your optimism now, and now stand for no opportunity wasted. And we always start this program with a verse of scripture or an inspirational quote. And today's verse, my husband, Mr. Kenneth Reed, of 40 years, that's not age, that's marriage. I'm still 39. I can't figure that out. I'm 39 and, you know, hey, (laughs) I'm married 40 years. But, uh, okay, seriously, folks, Uh, he's going to read the scripture for the day and, and just let you know in advance, he's a retired teacher, 34 years of teaching in the Muncie, Indiana community school system, has taught thousands of students, physical education, coaching, has done a lot of community work with people, and I could talk about him all day because i got 40 years of experience with this guy, but hey, Mr. Reed, take it away. Well, once again, we want to welcome everyone to the call, and you know, after 39, I think something goes wrong because it's sort of hard to figure out the math, but Bottom line is we've been together 40 years plus now. And I just want to thank my lovely bride of 40 years plus for all those years that we spent together. But, you know, we've been blessed to be together in our business. We've been blessed to be together as we come your way on this call. And as we start the day off, we want to start it off, first of all, with a scriptural reading It will be found in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verses 1 through 2. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verses 1 through 2, which reads, Cast your bread upon the waters, for after many days you will find it again. Give portions to seven, yes, to eight, for you do not know what disasters may come upon the land. Once again, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 1 through 2. Now, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you first of all for giving us the strength that we will wake and see this, a new day. We come thanking you for the many blessings you have given us throughout the week, throughout the years. But we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as we go into this discussion today, that the information that is shared might find a place in the hearts of the individuals, that once again, that bread will be cast upon the waters, that they will be nourished and be able to apply this to their lives and those that they come in contact with. This we do pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Kenneth Reed, my honey bunny, for uh, reading that scripture and for that prayer. We uh, we really are excited in a way, but this is a very serious subject we're going to be talking about because people tend to take wealth for granted. I'm not talking about wealth 
money that you can just roll around in. We're talking about having enough to help yourself as well as your neighbor, whomever your neighbor is. And we have a wonderful neighbor out in the Greenbelt, Maryland area. His name is Mr. Damon Ridley. And first of all, I just want to make sure that uh, he got on the line. Mr. Damon Ridley, did you get out there today? Yes, I'm on the line. Can you hear me? Yay, yes, we can. Uh, So technology is in our favor. We pray the lines stay clear. (laughs) But uh, we're so glad that you joined us here for just a few moments on our show, sir. But uh, let me just go ahead and uh, just tell a little bit about you, if you don't mind, okay? Uh, It says here that you have been in business for a number of years, but in 2007 of December uh, in Greenbelt, it says that you are working with financially motivated individuals or entrepreneurs in in a major sense, but others who are motivated to seek to accumulate wealth through their business profits and income generated from their salaries throughout their professional careers. So it would be safe to say that there are a lot of professionals with a lot of different lifestyle Uh, decisions and choices that you are uh, experienced with as far as seven specialty areas in financial planning, four specialty areas in investment management, three specialty areas in tax planning, five specialty areas in retirement planning, and two specialty areas in estate planning. Because if I read everything that you're doing, man, we'd be through. (laughs) We would be finished. But uh, but I'm just so glad to, to know that you you just really, this one quote that you had, that it really kind of stuck with me. And that quote is uh, basically, well, after it's cast, well, first of all, casting your bread upon the waters. I just want to say welcome to the show, but you've got a lot of good things that we want to talk about. So um, well, how are you today? I am doing great, and just want to thank you guys for having me uh, on the call. Uh, You have a a phenomenal platform, and I'm just so happy that I could be a part of it and add value to it. Okay, wonderful. We'll save the quote for last, okay, because it's actually on your LinkedIn page. But um, let's just start out with the one first of three questions here. Of all the professions that you had a chance to choose, what experiences moved you to enter the world of financial consulting? Uh, That's a great, great question. and. I will never forget the day that I realized that I wanted to go into the financial services profession. I was 16 years old, and I'm originally from Philadelphia, and I went to a very prominent public high school. And there was a career day where a gentleman had uh, come back to the school and shared his experience, his lifestyle, his accomplishments, how he has been able to help other individuals uh, become financially independent. And, and that particular segment was really when I, I saw myself as he was. I saw myself in the future be, doing exactly what he was doing. And so ever since that day, I was 16 years old in the 10th grade, I um, was on a mission to position myself to become um, a financial planner and investment advisor. And so that was that that trigger moment, that aha moment that put me on that journey. Aha. Wow. 16, that's when you're spending a lot of money, right? <laughs> Most people are like, oh, my goodness, uh, how do you teach a 16-year-old? But, but you had a passion. You definitely had a calling on your life. So uh, thank you for sharing that. And, it, again, it gets back to what, what mentorship. You know, and I know you'll get into that here probably a little bit later on, but for the second question, uh, how do you feel that people, especially in communities of color, I don't like to say minority communities anymore, but it seems like that it's taboo. People are afraid to talk about the concept of wealth management. How how does that strike you, especially with 2016 coming up? Sure, and I think it more so has a lot to do with, the uh, people feeling uncomfortable discussing the unknown and not revealing to the world that there's something that they should know about but they don't know about, so therefore it's not discussed. And so that is something that has played communities of colors for about 30 or 40 years, of being behind the curve financially. 
But mm. the the beautiful thing about information now that we have the internet is that it at least makes the information available. Now the other pro, um, the other issue that comes with information being available is what information is the right information for that individual. And so uh, this is something that I am very passionate about, educating people about their options, about scenarios, about what they've gone through in their life, how they think, so that they can better understand what's the best path to building wealth for my personality or what are some things that I have to continue to educate myself about so that I can stay the course. Hmm. Wow. And, and education doesn't have to be scary. We we promote education. It's sort of a segue into this next thing here. We promote it, we promote it, we prom- it's always promoted. But there are so many people who can't afford it and so many people who are going into debt because of it. And so you've got these hundreds of thousands of dollars with professionals and non-professionals alike who really want to improve their lives. Uh, can I call you Damon? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to say, why Mr. Ridley now? We're halfway through the interview. <laughs> but, uh, Damon, honest to goodness, and that that breaks families down. They they just feel like, you know, what what can I do? So with our final question on here, because we'll have a chance for people to be able to reach out to you, uh, give them all your uh, social media information, all your business info. But based on the final question um, of your years of experience, what's one word, and take your time with this, what's one word of knowledge uh, that you could give a person who's worked their entire life, put their entire nest egg, so to speak, and the egg is kind of cracked now, uh, into one thing, and they end up losing what they valued. In, in fact, they thought the companies valued them, but they kind of got a rude awakening when the chains were on the gates or the pink slips were issued in the last paycheck. What would you say to them? Just a word of knowledge, knowing what you do, and just take your time with this, please, sir. Sure. So that one word would be adaptability. 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 Um, Because it's not the strongest or the smartest that survive. It's those who are able to adapt the fastest. And right now, what we are going through in our economy is the in, the ending of a cycle. And and this this economic cycle began in the 70s. And and typically, uh, economic cycles will last 30, 40 years. And so um, that that cycle was the industrial uh, manufacturing age, where right. it, when 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 it was mass production. And so essentially, that cycle is coming to an end because you have now cheaper methods of being able to produce goods and services. And so the majority, the majority of the population, you know, they were working in that particular field. And, they, and, and, and so as those jobs go, have gone away, as, as they have been uh, transferred to robots and things of that nature, those that didn't adapt and did not um, look at where is the future going, you know, they're the ones who are, are getting hurt right now. They're going through a financial crisis because they can't change as fast as the rest of the economy. So I'll, I'll give you another example. Um, I had a conversation um, about this with a, a gentleman the other day, and what we were, were discussing was entrepreneurship and how the different aspects of entrepreneurship have changed. You know, 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago, when you, when someone owned a business, a small business, you know, it, it was a, a very nice salary. It was able to, you were able to afford a very middle class lifestyle. Well, now entrepreneurs are being either squeezed to become high income earners in order to stay in business, to be productive, or it may now be something that you do part-time, you know, in addition to because you have a passion for it. So, but just be in that middle class income space, 
you know, you're not going to survive because there's so much competition. So you either have to hit it out of the park and become a, a, a high-income owner, have a top-notch uh, a business, or you have to do it on a part-time basis where you just do it because it's passion. It's, it's something that you love to do, and you're not so con- not so much concerned about making tons of money. You want to make a little bit of money, but it, it, you're not relying on that income to uh, be your sole income source. So as a result, what's happened is that that entrepreneur 30 years ago, what, because of the hard work that they had to do, they, they did two things in order to be successful um, 30 years later. They either grew their business large enough so that someone could buy them out or that they could transfer the business to uh, uh, family members, kids, and, and relatives. Um, and, and they made that business attractive so that somebody would want to take it over. Then, or they were able to put their kids through college and, and as to say, listen, I want to give you more options than just owning this business because I just do this business just to sacrifice, to put the family forward, to give the family a, a better education, put you through medical school, put you through law school. But I wouldn't want you to do what I've, I've done over the last 30 years. So I want, I want you to have a little bit better options. So that adaptability of being able to have that, that foresight and vision has allowed individuals to put the ball, to move the ball forward in their family generational wealth. So now instead of, you know, someone earning middle class income while owning their business, they've been able to put their kids through the highest levels of education, which, has, which gives them the better probability to have a successful career or to advance further than that business owner was able to do. So, so that's a form of adaptability that we don't really think about and, and something that we don't apply to our lives. A lot, oftentimes, unfortunately, people get stuck and they just go along to get along. And that's something that you can't uh, fall into that trap. And, and when I speak of education, I'm more so speaking of knowledge because knowledge is what's needed now, not so much education as you mentioned. Education has become so common that everyone has a, a, a postgraduate degree, have a doctorate. So there's nothing. To, so there's. Uh, so it becomes harder and harder to differentiate people from each other unless they have mastered a, a particular skill set, a particular niche, a particular strategy, or a particular product. And so that. So the way that you do that is through knowledge. Well, how do you get the knowledge? as you uh, mentioned earlier, through mentorship, through following someone who has successfully co- uh, completed something that you wanted to do, and then ultimately you inject your personal beliefs, your personal influence, your personal philosophy to put a twist on it so that it could be somewhat different, so that you can differentiate yourself from everyone else. And you, by having a mentor, you learn how to go over the uh, obstacles. You you reduce your learning curve. You're able to put yourself in a position where um, instead of making 30 years of, of, of mistakes, you can have 20 to 30 years of progress through mentorship. And so all of these are methods of adaptability, you know, being able to see, okay, well, the masses is going into education. But maybe let me follow some individuals that have made uh, income amounts that I'm looking to achieve, and I can just tap into their system instead of going through a university initially where you're, you're going along a common path. Because ultimately what happens is that we know the job market is shrinking, so, well, what are you going to do when there's 10 MBAs in a room? When, when when there's ten lawyers in a room, you have to be able to have some type of different um, um, intangibility service or a trait that can distinguish you from everyone else. So being able to adapt, and those were some examples of how you can adapt going forward, and why some people have not been able to advance the ball. Uh, over the last 30 to 40 years. Wow. 
I mean, I, you threw a lot at us in a few minutes. That's it's incredible. Mistakes versus progress, uh, not not being able to get, I mean, just going along just to get along, be, people being complacent, being adaptable versus, it's like survival of the fittest out there. My husband had a couple of uh, real quick feedback points on what you just said, because he's a retired teacher, as I introduced uh, to earlier uh, to people, and, and he's just always saying I always hog the mic anyway, but <laughs> here he is. <laughs> So he has an opportunity to, to bounce back some, some ideas on you. Well, Damon, uh, as I listened to you and you did talk about a mind change, I think, you know, often we talk about our society today and how the job market is and, you know, we're looking at people, so-called middle-class people, uh, and you think, okay, there's a shrinking middle class. And everybody's solution seems to be more education. So you can go back to school and you can get more education. And if you get more education, then that's supposed to increase your financial situation. Well, I don't know if you spent a, lot, a number of years in college and you've gotten your doctorate degree, uh, you know, and you still worry today about what's going on in your financial world, and, you know, we'll have people say, well, I don't know if I'll ever be able to retire uh, because of the way the economy is. You know, I think one thing we talk about a, a change in mindset is as we look to other people that come into this country and get an education, I think one of the things we ought to focus on is they really are not getting an education to go to work. They're getting an education to actually establish a business. And so we're looking at people that are going into being entrepreneurs, okay? So what would you suggest people might do today to head in that direction? Great, great question, Mr. Reed, great question. And you really, you really tapped the, the, the biggest problem where people get stuck as they seek education. So – the first thing is that it's opportunity, understanding where the opportunities are. So I see oftentimes I have a lot of prospective clients who have a PhD, have a doctorate in um, psychology and education, and what they don't understand is that the environment is changing, that the education budget is shrinking, um, that there is a, uh, a ineffectiveness and, and how the current education uh, system is set up. However, there is a significant opportunity uh, because of that. So, so instead of someone going to work for in an administration, going to work for the state or, or the federal government in education, what I often suggest to them is say, listen, why don't you design a program that you can teach and then that you can share and you can uh, utilize as an entrepreneur. So, for example, I, I've been in, in, um, in talks with a, a prospective client for a while who's a family friend, was able to get her doctorate in, in social services. And the, the, the income that she would earn with her doctorate is minuscule to the, the cost in which she had to pay for that doctorate. So I told her, I said, listen, first of all, the investment in time it does not fit for what you've gone through. It's, it's a bad situation. Secondly, your creativity is going to be hindered because of the system. And then lastly, you have a drive right now that is extremely strong, and as you continue to stay in your environment, it's going to dampen. So, it's, so you're being forced to become entrepreneurial. Well, so what does that mean? Well, we talked about, you know, ways in which she can work directly with insurance companies instead of government agencies, ways in which where she could um, be able to offer, you know, uh, online university type of um, sessions and, and, and programs for individuals at a, a smaller cost. So instead of having maybe, um, you know, 10 large clients who, who, who are paying, um, 
a, a sizable fee, maybe work with 100 to, to 200 who are able to pay $9 a month to access information and have uh, some infrequent interactions to help them go through whatever social issues that they're having. So, and, and I simply share some resources where people are doing this, and it was like a, a new child had been born because now she really was able to see where she could go with this. But it was only because now she's identified some mentors that have already done it and who are actually teaching others how to duplicate that. So understanding where the opportunity is for, for what you're passionate about. Because here's the beauty, here, here's the beauty, no matter what economic environment we're in, there's always opportunity. But you have to understand how to go about that. And so if, if, if you're in corporate America, if you're in uh, working for the states and municipalities, right now the budgets are tight. You know, things are, are, are going to get a little worse um, as, the economic, as the economy continues to, to struggle over the next couple of years. So now is the perfect time to identify, okay, what do I, what do I like to do that I'm passionate about? And if I didn't get paid, I would still want to do it. And so that's the first point. And then that second point from there is identifying some others that have had some success, the type of success that it, you're seeking to be able to understand what they're doing and then you duplicate that and be able to um, put your own personality onto it so that you can continue to be passionate about that work. Whoa. <laughs> and we are about out of time. Woo! Um, that was the most invigorating financial conversation we have ever had. <laughs> Usually people talk about financial advisors like, Oh, but you know something, this quote, and I'm so glad that I waited to use it, um, you said on your LinkedIn profile, the natural evolution of life requires that you're spiritually, socially, and financially balanced to feel financially confident, exclamation point, that your job, you say, my job is to provide financial strategies while you focus on the spiritual and social peace. Somebody needs to make you a sage or something because you know what? <laughs> Thank you so much. You don't know how how helpful this is going to be to so many people because we all do different things. God gifted us to be brought into different areas of of, of this life, and you don't want to just settle because to stretch, get out of our comfort zones, man. I think you have sparked some things for people, and to keep that spark going. Tell the folks out there, the people, how can they reach you? In for, oh, you also, have, you look very nice on the cover of a magazine, too, Proactive Advisor Magazine. <laughs> uh, I had to shout that out there, and I just wanted to um, give you an opportunity to do any shout-outs to anybody, uh, you know, mom, hi, mom, uh, anybody that you want to just say, hey, you know, thank you so much and also um, how they can get in contact with you in Greenbelt or even if they live in California, people can still contact you, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So it's just a matter of, it doesn't matter where you are, um, you can reach me. Uh, my website is at RidleyWealthStrategies.com, all one word. Um, email is dridley at RidleyWealthStrategies.com. Phone number is 301-982-00. One four. Um, you can find me on uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook at Damon Ridley, and um, that magazine that you mentioned, I, I was actually um, uh, featured to talk to educate other financial advisors on how to implement risk reducing investment strategies for retirees. So I was so that was a a great opportunity to help others teach the masses. So. Um, that's that's what that magazine is there for. And then also I uh, want to give a special shout-out to my lovely wife, Kim, and my uh, son, Deshaun and, and Kendall, for all their love and support. And just um, looking to help anyone who, who needs it, I believe that it's all about being able to point people in the right direction. Absolutely. And uh, with that, I, I thought of a song. We're all old school here. <laughs> Lynn Collins, think about it. We hope you all think about what Mr. Damon Ridley, CEO, 
of Ridley. I want to say Ridley Wealth Sage Strategies, you know, but but you are just such a wonderful, wonderful guest that we've had on our program today. And we want people to think about this, think about sharing this show with others. You can replay it for the next, oh, how about three and a half weeks, okay, by dialing 712-432-1085. At 712-432-1085. And the PIN number is 802089 pounds. You can also find us on Facebook under Read New Attitude Show. Be sure to put show because if you put Read New Attitude only, you're going to get a, a powerhouse of really controversial stuff that some people would talk about. But anyway, Read New Attitude Show, R-E-E-D-N-U-A-T-T-I-T-U-D-E-S-H-O-W. And you can connect with me and my husband on LinkedIn. We're both there, as well as going to the Read New Attitude Archive. And you can get that at betterthandonuts.com, D-O-N-U-T-S dot com, and click New Attitude Show for a lot of great inspirational interviews, like the one you just heard from Mr. Damon Ridley. So without any further ado, we want to wish you all an amazing week. Have an amazing month. It's November, so get out and vote. Vote for some folks who got some sense to think about you and the future that you have. So without any further ado again, we always go out of here saying, Ken and Cynthia Reed, who are saying to you, be bold, be beautiful, and be Be blessed. blessed.